Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. Today I'm going to be talking about a thing like Goosebumps. Today I'm going to be talking about something that somebody had recommended to me a long time ago. I think it's my friend Ryan that comments down in the comment section a lot of the time. Somebody recommended this to me when I read my first Ghosts of Fear Street book. There was actually a TV pilot that was made to try to spin off kind of a new R.L. Stein Goosebumpsy type thing. Uh, if you haven't read Ghosts of Fear Street, you probably don't realize how much it's like Goosebumps, but it's not actually written by R.L. Stein. It's, it's labeled as a title, R.L. Stein's Ghosts of Fear Street. The title of the actual, well, the name of the actual authors are usually never written on this. You have to find them inside of the book on the copyright page, and you'll actually see written by such and such. Um, I've only read two of the Ghosts of Fear Street books. I'm not sure if this episode is based on any particular one. But I did read two of them, and I loved the second one I read, which was Halloween Bugs Me. The first one I read I thought was really, really good. Uh, it was Hide and Shriek, the first book of that whole series. And this TV pilot was, of course, made in uh, 1998. It's about 22 minutes long. You can find a few different people who have played this, or listed it, at least uploaded it, on YouTube. The problem is the quality. I mean, <laughs> the one guy that I watched it from, I physically couldn't see a lot of stuff. Uh, when, at least when the episode first started. Later on, it's not really as important because it kind of, kind of becomes a more small-scale uh, story. You don't really have so much of a, a woodsy trees everywhere type of thing like the front of the yard in this story or episode whatever so it was a little hard to see i'm not gonna lie to you uh it was literally like somebody had taken a vhs copy and uploaded it directly to the tv and you have to remember this is the premiere episode because literally when it ended they started showing like abc family uh commercials for stuff which i thought was kind of sweet and kind of cool as a nostalgic 90s kid um it was i i have to tell you this if you like Goosebumps, I think you'll appreciate this episode. But be ready, because it's real weird. It, it's, it's real weird. I would have actually liked to have seen what else we could have gotten with more of the show, but I will say this. This is a setup episode that would have set up an entirely new idea that I had not seen Ghost of Fear Street do at this point. I don't know whether what they were trying to set up was a new basis for the show where you'd have the same recurring characters all the time that would go through new things for new stories every single episode. I'm not sure how they were going to go about that. Uh, I will say this. The, the opening to the show, a lot of people have criticized the intro to this show with the skeleton because it's a 3D model and it's like dancing and the music is so wacky 1990s to the, to the, the, the nth degree, right? I loved it. I loved every second of that intro, as goofy and dumb as it was. That was the 90s right there, captured on screen for all of us to look at. Um, the story itself is mostly, in my opinion, kind of cool. I would have liked to have seen more, like I said, because it's kind of focused on this family who the dad is a, is a famous writer, apparently, or at least a writer. I don't know about famous, but he's a writer for a living. And he and his wife are going to his wife's um, dad's house to try to kind of start taking care of him, get him to start organizing all of his stuff at his shop that he owns where he also lives and sell all of his stuff so that he can live with them now at their house. But the dad has always had a bond with this grandfather figure, uh, the mother's father, <clears throat> father, because he loves this house. The husband in this particular episode, he loves, you know, all these decorations, all these different stories of these ways that this man got all this stuff to sell in his shop. It's a very odd shop. You have things like tarantulas and skulls and lots of other things, you know, electric, uh, an, electrocution t an electrocution chair, excuse me, um, all kinds of stuff like that in this wild, bizarre little place that the dad could get new story ideas off of. And before we get to any of that information, we actually start the episode with him reading a story that he started writing to his kids. And the story is about a kid that goes into a, a house and, like, all the people in the house are covered in webs and stuff. Uh, it turns out his friend had, did, had done some kind of experiment and became, like, a praying mantis person. Where his whole head just turns into, like, a praying mantis bug. If you look at the IMDB page, it's like the first thing you see is a person with a giant, uh, giant like, bug head. Um, that animatronic on that head was pretty cool, by the way, when they used it. But what that ends up evolving into as the story goes along is really stupid. One of the worst things that happened that really honestly made me almost turn off the episode until I was like, this one episode, I can burn through it and do a review on it and talk about it. Because I think some people might have an interest in this, especially for people who haven't heard of it. One of the biggest things that really got to me and really made it hard not to just stop watching was when the Bugman, 
at the beginning, in the story, lifted his armpits up and started spraying web at, the, at his friend that was running away. At first, when he was yelling at the top of his lungs and laughing and cackling at the top of his lungs, I thought that he was just shooting it out of his mouth and it was weird 1990s CGI. Now, not only was it weird 1990s CGI, but they clarified the webs were coming out of his armpits. That... I don't... I'm not sure if R.L. Stein's ever written that in a book. Like I said, I'm not sure how much of this, this episode might even actually be based on a book. But if it turns out that Ghost of Fear Street, any, in any capacity at all, happens to have a book that has somebody shooting webs out of their armpit, like a weird Spider-Man type thing, I don't know how I'd feel about that. Because, of course, like I said, these books are written by somebody else. They're not written by R.L. Stein. It's a fact. But that twist on that is not only unnerving and uncomfortable, but it's weird. And I don't like it. I think it's stupid. Um, but when it comes to the cinematography of the episode, as hard as it was to watch what I saw on YouTube, um, it looks okay. The sets look pretty cool in the house that the grandfather lives in, that his shop is set up inside of. Um, I actually really like the actor and actress that played the mom and dad in this. and that, Even the grandpa, for that matter. Uh, the kids were really funny. I love the youngest brother. I love how he has like this obsession with gore and death and stuff. One of my favorite lines is in this of all time. The kid was like, I think the grandfather was talking to the kid about like like horror movies and stuff. And the kid was like, the kid was like, yes, grandpa, I like horror, blood, death, and gore. <laughs> That's what he said. And it was it was something along those lines, and it was absolutely hilarious. And it just caught me off guard. I, I didn't expect a child actor. To be able to deliver that in the silliest 90s, 90s ist way that I've ever seen in my life, and it was fantastic. Cracked me up, man. Um, <laughs> it's it's a real goofy show, man. But what they were kind of doing with this show is setting up this idea that they could have kind of like what the new Are You Afraid of the Dark show is doing, where they have a setup of this from now on. This family will have their own adventures. They will always be the recurring cast, from what I can tell from what they were doing here. They would just keep telling new stories involving this family and this house. That looked to be like what they were going to do. Uh, and I also thought it was cool because the house has, well, the grandfather has like a, a ghost in the attic and like an invisible dog, which is kind of a reference to the invisible man. It's kind of cool, kind of cute, I guess. It, it was not perfect. It was not <laughs> very much even good, frankly. Um, it was enjoyable. Especially if you're somebody like myself who loves enjoyably awful things. Um, if you liked this, or if you like Goosebumps and you want something weird to watch, you might like this. Like I said, it's pretty much on YouTube. That's pretty, pretty much the only place... I can't even talk. I'm sorry. It's pretty much the only place you're going to find this, because it's, it's pretty close to being called an abomination, frankly. <laughs> Just because of how tremendously rough it is. I don't even know what else to say about it, frankly. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts on Ghost of Fear Street's TV pilot. If you happen to have seen it, if you want to watch it, and then come back and tell me what you think about it, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Um, like I said, in some capacity, I wish we had gotten more so I could see what else they were going to do with this. Because I would have loved this, I think, as a kid. I would have realized how awful it is now, just very much like I've, re I've realized a lot of Goosebumps TV episodes are really awful. Um, nothing that I've really reviewed here so far. But a lot of the TV episodes, like from what I've seen from JonTron, for example, like with the, the Ghost Beach episode, I kind of like. But like something like My Hairiest Adventure, that's awful. <laughs> that's really, really awful. Um, for such a low-budget show, too. And this is pretty... Th this, to me, seems like it has a little bit of a higher budget than a lot of Goosebumps episodes. But it could be because it's the pilot episode, which is usually very low-budget. Them trying to get their feet on the ground and everything else. If they had gotten really a first episode and not just the pilot, I think they could have gotten somewhere, frankly. Um, this would have grown on kids, I think. Even though it was 1998, that's around the time Goosebumps pretty much started dying out. 97, 98, somewhere in there, because of Harry Potter. Uh, so it kind of doesn't surprise me that this thing didn't get its feet on the ground, but it could have been cool. It could have been interesting to see something else. You might have had as big of a fan base as Goosebumps if this would have gotten just as big. Um... Uh, or had even more prosperity with having a further TV show and not just this crappy pilot that apparently premiered on like TV like one time and never came back. But anyway, guys, what are your thoughts on the Ghosts of Fear Street TV show pilot? Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Are you going to watch it after I talked about this? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. It's a mess. It's a mess and a half. And it's a charming mess on top of that. 
but the main character kid that does like all this intricate engineering stuff, like at one point he steals a car battery from his parents' car and uses this to try to use it as like a bug zapper type thing, and the way he sets up like all of his gadgets attached to this is actually kind of fun and kind of funny for that matter. I think kids would love this episode. I really do. Um, I have to give props where it is. I, it, it's it's something I think kids would have loved a lot. But, yeah, you see all that wet. If you've seen the episode, you know how wild and crazy this is. But, anyway, guys, what are your thoughts? Put them down below. If I had to rate Ghost of Fear Street's TV pilot on a five-star basis, I'd probably give it, like, a probably like a two out of five. It's pretty rough. But, anyway, <laughs> what are your thoughts? Put them down below. Do you like the books? Let me know all that. Thank you for watching. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you guys today, and goodbye.